Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett, and today I'm going to get into a video, a 3D print video, and this is going to get into what to do if your printer is printing in mid-air. Now, in some situations, you might want to scrap and restart your print, because this is not going to be a very simple handhold thing. There's a lot of things you're going to have to do on your own. I'll explain why in a little bit. As I was editing this, I forgot um, to add in here that I will have a link down below to a bunch of resources that could help you out and figure out what you're looking at in the G-code. Uh, so note that and um, feel free to ask places like um, Reddit, uh, 3D print forums and other th places like that. But um, real quick, uh, my particular situation, it's a multi-day print, 100% infill and it's used quite a bit of material already and i'm at a stage right now where if i can't do it then i have to scrap it and come back to it at an air time when i get more material in time but if i can save it then great i can continue from here and you know it delays things for a little bit but still it, it saves it so i'm going to try save it uh because you know i don't have too many options here so um, in this case, what you need to do is make sure your nozzle is nowhere near the print. Uh, try to figure out what caused the problem. Um, in this case, you know, it's like a jam and most things like that's going to be easy to fix. Just run some um, un unloaded filaments, run some new filament through and some new filament will be fine. Uh, chances are it's like something like this where you're going to be high detailed and in just how the machine works and how it's built you can run problems like this so with that in mind you got things working great um make sure your nozzle is cooled off because you don't want to cause problems and don't want the thing to leak out over your print so what you need to do is um if the machine has the ability to go back on its own and 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 go from there great i did recommend prusa today them adding something like this some type of rewind feature where you can say at this height uh print messed up and therefore it should go back at that point and just continue from there and um that'd be great uh but at this point i i don't know of a single machine that has a function even close to that so we're just going to have to go through G-code. So before that, we, uh, if the machine has the ability to tell you the Z height, uh, the nozzle, then great. Make sure it's uh, the room temperature before you do anything so you don't melt the print. But you can use that to actually figure out your Z height. Otherwise, you're going to have to use the tool. It might be best to use the tool anyways to get around about. Especially, uh, by the way, the MK3, Prusa MK3, while wow, it does give you a Z height, it's not an absolute Z height. What I mean by that is you're going to be kind of in a weird position of one millimeter to the next type of situation. And we're in the middle because this is a very, very fine detail. So what I need to do here is take a tool, just figure out the about and get a number. From there, I go into the um, G code itself. And this is just an example of some, I, I already fixed what I, I been doing but the first thing you need to do and keep in mind each slicer is going to produce a different type of g-code as far as what it's going to put out but i'm using prusa's default software i like it it's very easy to deal with in situations like that they detailed everything that goes through or most everything so you, you can quickly look at it and say these are things i need to take out so in this case um i don't want the thing to go down at all i don't want the thing to zero out and to go to the bed level because problems so what i want to do is take out mesh leveling a home without mesh um stuff like that take that completely out and that way i don't have to deal with that problem at all so from there um what i need to do is and i got the other up uh right here and basically what I need to do is um, once I got all that out we're adding so we're deleting code um, keep in mind that you don't want to mess around monkey around with this too much because if you change things like speeds you can actually permanently damage the machine so like if the 
uh, thing whacks the side real hard, it can bend something so it permanently damages it. You, won't, you, you We're not changing anything like that, and you want to avoid doing anything like that. We're just deleting code, and we're adding this one line here. G28 basically says to home, and we don't want it at home to Z, the up and down. We just want it at home to X and Y. So it goes to the absolute right place when it goes for this. So from here, what we're doing is with the modifications in place, we're taking out all the code in between and going from there. And uh, basically what's going to be from here down is all the original code. Uh, so going back to here, Basically, we had the first layer and going from there. And because we don't want that, we're just going to take all of that out and start it from the place. So in this case, the measurement was like 35.38. And this is where it kind of gets um, iffy. So real quick, uh, when you're doing this particular stunt, you want to basically uh, keep an eye on it uh, for, for for at least the first layer that you're doing this, because if you hit, hear it hitting at all, then you might want to address that for the next layer up. Um, so just know that, um, and this is to minimize any scene. So when you're happy with it, uh, one big tip I can give is um, when the extruder when, when you're about to start have the thing heated up, clean the nozzle, because you're not going to prime the nozzle since you're starting in midair, and then just start it immediately, and that way you run to the least amount of problems as possible.